This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the very last lecture on basic variances. And, um, you know, we did example one, uh, we did all the variances, assuming we're doing using absorption costing. If you look on the next page, example two says, um, Analyze and produce an operating statement. We did that. Example three uh, asked us to do it all again using margin. I didn't bother preparing um, uh, a, a, the original fixed budgets. It would have been wasting time. But we did the operating statement using marginal. The last one, which is what I want to talk about here, not for too long, is the interpretation of variances. And this is vital because even if there are no basic variances at all in um, your paper F5 exam, um, and, you know, it's only the advanced variances in the next chapter. There is absolutely no doubt there's a section C question, which is very likely. Part of it will be arithmetic calculations. Part of it will be discussing. And it really will be interpreting the variances. And the chat on the later variances, the advanced ones, is the same sort of thinking as in this one. And so what I'm to do... I could pick any of them, but if we look at that materials expenditure variance, it was adverse 3867. And remember, that's simply related to one thing. It's nothing to do with what material, how much material we used. It was simply checking, did we pay whatever it was, 450 a kilo or not? We obviously paid more than 450 a kilo. And whatever manager is responsible for that, we'd be asking him to give us a report. Why did we pay more than 450 a kilo? Now here we don't have um, enough information to know exactly why, but there are all sorts of different reasons it could have happened. And so what I want to look at is the possible reasons for this adverse materials expenditure variance. Uh, now, I wish we were in the room together because I'd ask you to come up with ideas. And in fact, I know you probably won't, <laughs> but it would actually be a good idea if you pause the lecture and just for a few minutes see how many reasons, possible reasons, you can think of. Because there are several, in fact. Some obvious, some less so. But it really would be a good idea to pause, jot down on a piece of paper any reasons you can think of, and then come back and see if you thought of all of them. Anyway, whether you did pause or you didn't, I'll carry on. We spent more than 450 a kilo. And I think one obvious reason that there could have been is there'd been a price increase. It's perhaps the most obvious reason of all. That when we budgeted, uh, this material was costing 450 a kilo. This year, the supplier has put the price up to 460 a kilo. Not much we can do about it, obviously, but immediately we've got an adverse variance. Fine. Uh, there could be various reasons why. I mean, some people suggest, oh, oh, oh. maybe we're buying the uh, goods from abroad. Uh, you know, we're buying them from uh, Europe and they're priced in euros. Maybe the exchange rate has changed. And although the price itself didn't go up, when we came to convert to dollars, maybe it ended up costing more. Well, fine, we could go on and on there, but I put it in the same category that for one reason or another, the price has gone up. However, it may not have been that. Maybe the price hasn't gone up at all and should still be 450 a kilo, but maybe the Whoever's responsible, the purchasing manager, has perhaps done a bad job. I call it bad buying. 
What I mean is, uh, maybe we could obtain the material for 50, but maybe um, the purchasing manager has simply gone to the wrong supplier and ended up paying more. Or maybe we budgeted on 450, as, assuming we got discounts. And maybe the purchasing manager didn't fight for the discounts and again ended up paying less. Uh, sorry, paying more. And so there's a second reason. The first one, not much we can do about it, price has gone up. The second one, of course we can. Uh, the purchasing manager, either we should replace him or we should teach him how to buy better. Uh, what else? Now, this might seem a silly one, but it's possible. It could simply have been uh, a mistake in the budget. When we had the budgeting lecture, I said that however hard we try, you know, people do make mistakes. And maybe uh, the price never was $4.50. Uh, maybe it was a mistake. The price was $4.60 and we should have put $4.60. We made a mistake, obviously, if we put too low a price in, uh, we get anything out of this variance. And it's not the purchasing manager's fault. 450 was never realistic. Oh, there's another one which is very, very important. That actually is a, a bit of a lead in to one of the advanced variances. Maybe we could have bought material at 450. However, maybe we deliberately decided to buy better material which costs more. So it was a deliberate decision to buy more expensive material. Now, why on earth would we do that? You know, we want to keep costs down. Why on earth go and buy more expensive material when we could have bought it at a cheaper price? Well, in fact, there are several reasons. One reason could be that we decided, oh, the material we were originally intending to use there's a lot of waste. And that if we bought better material, perhaps we'd have less wastage, and so the kilos for each unit would be less than four. So as I say, it could be to reduce wastage. And if we had to reduce waste, what would that mean? It would mean we'd end up using fewer kilos per unit, which would mean we'd get a favourable usage variance. Now, I don't know, I mean, I'm saying this is a possible reason, that's all. But just look back at what we had on the operating statement. We did spend more on materials. And if it was deliberate, because therefore we'd use less, well, we have got a favourable usage variance. Now, as it's turned out, if that was the reason, it's not really worked. We did overspend our materials. We did save because of usage. But if you look at the two together, the saving we made was less than the extra cost. But, you know, had the saving on usage been 4,612, then it would actually have been a good idea. I'm more than happy to uh, spend an extra... Sorry. I'm more than happy to spend extra on the materials if, as a result, I save more somewhere else. But there are lots of reasons we could have done it. Again, we may have delivered the time to buy better material because... The workers could work on it faster. You know, the poor material, it's taking them five hours to make a unit. If we have better material, maybe they could produce faster, they'd take less hours per unit to produce faster. And if that hadn't been the case, what would have happened? 
we'd have a, we'd have a favourable efficiency variance. And of course we have here, in fact. We'd spent 3867 more on the materials. Efficiency, well, because they work faster, I saved 2,000 and I saved overheads as well. So we have saved money. And so again, we have to look at the two together and say, overall, was it worth spending more to get the saving, you know, was there a net saving or an extra cost? It's no good just looking in isolation and saying, oh, bad, good, bad, good, 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 and so on. This link between the two, there certainly can be cases, obviously, where it's worth spending more somewhere if you'll get a bigger saving somewhere else. Uh, and to complete it, why else might you buy better material? Oh, of course, another reason could be to make a better product. But of course, we're not a charity. Why would we want to make a better product? Well, one of two reasons. Uh, either to be able to sell more, in which case you'd have a favourable sales volume variance or the other reason <clears throat> why you might be prepared to spend money to make a better product is that because you could increase the selling price in which case there'd be a favorable sales price variance uh, now, in this question, I'm not going to wind back, but in fact, the sales price variance was massively adverse. So, if, um, if that had have been our plan, uh, it certainly didn't work. We have had a favourable sales volume variance, but I think here the most likely reason for having sold more is because we dropped the price so much. Dropped the price enormously. We did sell more, but overall, obviously, um, the the loss in the sales price was much, much greater than the increase in sales volume. But I always see the point I'm trying to make, that these variances need investigating. You know, if it's uh, a price increase, all right, we can't do anything about that. We're going to have to accept if there's a price increase in January, adverse variance, then it's going to carry on all year. If it's bad buying, we can do something train the buyer to buy better or replace them. If it's a mistake in the budgeting, I suppose not much we can do this year, but make sure next year we try and budget without making mistakes. Uh, but as far as this last one is concerned, I hope I've made it clear that it's not a question of always looking at variances on their own. One could affect another because we've changed our plans. And depending on why we did it, you'd be looking at the net variance. If overall it was saving us, it was a good idea to change the plans. If overall it was adverse variance, it was a bad idea. Uh, this uh, uh, idea of one variance affecting another, we call the interrelationship of variances. And in fact, because of that, <clears throat> you will see in the next chapter, one of the advanced variances is something called planning and operational, where we analyse the variances even further. And we say, well, how much of the variance is caused because we changed our plans? We deliberately bought more expensive material in order to save money somewhere else. And how much of the variance was caused by things like bad buying, um, where it could be a combination of the two. So it's not as bad as it sounds, I think you'll quite enjoy it, but that's the next chapter. Uh, but do make sure you can write about variances, whether you get the right figures or not is irrelevant. Having a sensible discussion on your variances 
if the discussion is sensible, that gets full marks. Okay, otherwise that is now completely finished. Now you can carry on with the advanced ones.